that make a sound? Uh, ba da bing <laughs> bow. Oh, hi guys, how you doing? Good to see you. We're all here. Everything's fine. Hi. Hello everyone. Hey. All hey. Right. Yeah. All right. Then yeah, we did it. We did it. We made it <laughs> to another Wolf Den podcast. How you doing? Well, I'm drinking a dirty matcha. So does that mean there's alcohol in it? No. Huh. Then what makes it dirty? Because that usually means... All the beans spilled on the floor. Oh, no, I'm okay. kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know how <laughs> coffee works. It's just uh, a, a regular old latte. Okay. But I put matcha powder in the milk and a little bit of vanilla because matcha doesn't taste that good by itself. <laughs> <laughs> put a little vanilla in it. Cuts the grassy taste. Yeah. Anyway, how you guys doing? You're quiet. You are quiet. Which, How about that? Which one? This raise, one or that one? Raise the volume. I see we're in the red. Okay. We are not quiet. <laughs> um. Anyway. How you doing, guys? Good to see you. Uh, We got a lot of things to talk about today. <laughs> Did you just like... Oh, so many what things. What was that? <laughs> that was just my average normal speaking voice, Will. <laughs> Got a lot of things to talk about today. Big big time news is Nintendo is is doing their thing where they just exercise they, just like, their copyright to an insane level. They're just reminding people that, you know, they are the authority and you will bow to them whether you like it or not. Uh Wolf Den Oh, that's Will Wolf damn it. Yes. Hey Wolf Bros, pour one out for MTV News Rip. MTV News is dead now. They just killed it. I am amazed it's around. St- it was around this It was long. A very long, but they I just read that they decided, you know what? We need to save money. MTV News, goodbye. I got a text about that because our <laughs> friend Jerry oh, that's right. works yeah. for uh, Viacom, I guess. It's yes. Comedy Central and MTV. Yes. Um, and he was fearing for his life. Yeah. That's because yeah. 6,000 people got laid off. Yeah. And... He also, the first thing he said was MTV News got, got laid off. And then he yeah. said 6,000 people. I was like, 6,000 people work for MTV News? I mean, I'm sure that wasn't that many people there. But, no. I mean, across all of uh, Viacom. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. And that's just, it's it's going to keep happening. It's yeah. been happening to all these, uh, all, I mean, well, it's, it's been it's, happening in tech. Yeah. It's, and now it's happening a lot in media. Mostly because the writers are striking and nobody knows what to do. Yeah. You know, God forbid they pay writers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, Will Wolf, damn it. Thanks for the Prime sub. Yeah, that was supposed to be for a part of my Prime sub message, but I don't know how Twitch works. Ah, so. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Uh, anyway. Yeah, no. Uh, 6,000 people did not work for MTV. Yeah. Uh, Sleeping Toads TV, thanks for the 23 months. Hello. How you doing? Uh, Tone says, hi, have you ever thought of making a video about Switch CFW? That's the, is that the Android hack? Because I I did do that a long time ago, and I did not have a good time with it, and I don't want to ever experience that <laughs> again. That, does that Switch still even work? Yeah. Okay. No, it, it can work as a vanilla Switch, too. Okay. It turns on normally, but if you put the little side loader thing in yeah. it, it, it boots Android. And Android is horrible on there oh, runs imagine, really yeah. really bad there's a linux thing mm-hmm. uh and that's supposedly better i haven't i haven't touched it yeah uh jazim thank you for the eight months i appreciate it is that a pair book pro yeah i forgot i did this uh, i put a little pair logo nah it's for cute. for a video and i just never took it off um cfw is just an acronym for custom former oh yeah oh i did the android one i didn't do anything else uh we got a lot to talk about today we're gonna talk about uh nintendo dmcaing everybody because Mm -hmm. of uh, because of uh zelda and uh we also got to talk about video game hall of fame oh we talk about that every time yeah so we got new nominees this year and they may surprise you phil spencer admitted that xbox is is bad it's it's not (laughs) I had to explain because, like, my boss at work, uh, my, my one boss is a PlayStation guy. My other boss is an Xbox guy. Ooh, and every day they they box. Yeah, and I'm over here in the middle, like Switch. Uh, <laughs> I had to explain to him the Phil Spencer podcast, and he was like shocked. 
Mm. He's like, what am I going to do with my $500 machine now? <laughs> and my Game Pass subscription. Did you listen to it? Yeah. All right, well, it was, we'll, I was we'll listening to him mowing the lawn. It was very sad. It was it was mm. crazy. Yeah. It, it, I was not expecting it to be yeah. as candid as it was. Uh, Sony shuts down Pixelopus Studios. Uh, Spider-Man Remastered Space World GameCube prototype. Oh, God. Yeah. And some other and other stuff. crap. Oh, we gotta bring the switch sales. We gotta bring that. Oh up. yeah, bring that. Nintendo had a marketing uh, call uh, yesterday. Yes. And whenever they have an earnings call, we get news to talk about. Yeah. So we will talk about that right after we're done talking about Nintendo going after Switch emulation. Yeah. Because it's Tears of the Kingdom. This is just the one of a couple of DMCA's yes. that we're gonna see. Or, or or copyright takedowns, I, yes. should, I should say. Perhaps woken by news of its next premiere first party title already looking really impressive on emulators, Nintendo has moved to take down key tools for emulating and unlocking Switch consoles, including one that lets Switch owners grab keys from their own device. Uh, Simon Aarons maintained a forked repository of Lockpick, a tool along with Lockpick uh, underscore RCM, that grabbed the encryption keys from a Nintendo Switch and allowed it to run officially licensed games. Aaron's tweeted on Thursday night that Nintendo had issued a DMCA takedown request uh, to GitHub asking Lockpick, Lockpick, uh, RCM, and nearly 80 forks and uh, deviations to be taken down under Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which largely makes illegal which largely makes illegal the circumvention of technology protection measures that safeguard copyright and material. Nintendo's takedown requests, RTF files, um, oh, there's an RTF file to the takedown request. I, I got it. Nintendo's takedown request notes that the Switch contains multiple technology protection measures that allow the Switch to play only legitimate Nintendo video game files. Lockpick tools combined with a modified Switch let users grab the crypto uh, cryptographic keys from their own switch and use them on systems without nintendo's console tpms to play pirated versions of nintendo copyrighted protected game software github typically allows repositories with dmca strikes filed against them to remain open uh, while their maintainers argue their case still it was an effective move seeing nintendo move on lockpick a popular switch emulator on android um, and skyline called it quits over the weekend, at least as a public-facing tool you can easily download to your phone. In a Discord post, uh, the developer Mark wrote that the risk associated with potential legal cases are too high for us to ignore, and we cannot continue uh, knowing that, and we cannot continue knowing that we may be in violation of copyright law. Uh, prior to Nintendo's DMCA request, Skyline's team had believed that they that using keys from your own Switch console to, to emulate games you legally purchased was legal. Skyline remains as one of Skyline remains as an open source project, though the core team will not update or otherwise work uh, on it as of Sunday. Other popular Switch emulators for PC, uh, Yuzu and Ryujinx, remain online with the Ryujinx team issuing a statement on their Discord that they would not be shutting down, according to news reports. So I've used Skyline, and this is pretty sad, because yeah. they were like the one to use for Android. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of great, uh, really powerful Android emulators popping up now, and they're able to run Switch games. Yeah. So I tried it on the Razer Edge, and it was shockingly uh, easy to use and 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 worked very well. Uh, it's a weird sort of area that I don't like to talk too much about yeah. because uh, why is Nade Shot on a Adobe Creative Cloud ad? <laughs> uh, that's, that's interesting. Why not? What, is, what, is he, what does he do with creative? Anyway, um, yeah, it, it was just a great emulator. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a weird gray area that I don't like to talk about too much right. like in my videos when I review like Android emulation and stuff because... A lot of the games that run best on Android, because the Android devices just aren't that powerful, a lot of the games that run best are indie games. Right. And you're just promoting pirating indie yeah. games. So like I think I don't think there's anything wrong with emulating Switch stuff if mm -hmm. you own it. But right now, Switch games are easily accessible. You can just go buy them for a right. Switch. It's it feels a lot different than like Game Boy Advance emulation. Like you can't play Sonic Advance anywhere. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So, 
uh, it still is like a weird moral conundrum for me. But I am still disappointed that Skyline was taken down. Even though it's like a little weird to emulate Switch games because they're all available yeah. right now. It's nice to have all of this stuff around because when Switch inevitably does uh, cut the servers or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, everything will be set up and ready to go. Yeah, the games will be there. And even if, you know... And we'll be able to run great. Yeah, yeah. And you know, even if you have, even if like Nintendo does keep the Switch servers online for a while, you know, say you don't have access to your Switch, you can still play these games like on your laptop or yeah. on your phone. Like there, there are ways for you to play the games that you bought. Yeah, and Lockpick was a way for you to use your own games that you own to take the keys from the 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 cartridge that you own, the, your yeah. own console. Take take the keys from each game mm -hmm. uh that was uh the way to play your own games instead of downloading them off of the internet instead of pirating the games you would use this tool to play the games that you owned so nin by nintendo dmcaing lockpick mm -hmm. they essentially forced people to they're they're forcing pirates to pirate yeah basically so so the 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 modders or the piraters who were doing things, you know, within their own legal grounds are now being forced to pirate if they want to play these games on mm -hmm. devices that aren't a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. So that's great. That's insane. Yeah. That sounds insane. But like I keep saying doing something like this, like playing your Zelda game on a computer if it's your game that you own, that should be covered under something like the right to repair. Yeah. Uh, which I guess doesn't have enough legal standing yet. Well, I know like when it comes to other media, like with music and movies, like if you rip your CD to your computer, you can do that. Yeah. Like it, and I can rip my DVDs and Blu-rays to my computer. Yeah. And I can like play put them on a Plex server or like load them in iTunes. Like I can, can do things like yeah, that. Yeah, so why can't there, you do that with the video there's game? There's no way to do that with video games. You know, and I know like movies, you know, movie studios and the recording industry have tried to implement their own uh not DMCA. Uh what's it called? It's copy protection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, DRM. DRM, yeah. They tried to put their own DRM in like CDs and DVDs, but those all fail. Right. And so at a certain point, they're just like, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well, also, too, they they realized early on that, like, digital is the way to go. So they'll put their stuff on, like, iTunes and Amazon and yeah. like, Voodoo and just give people access to the movies, you know, rather than, you know, fight the fight that they were losing. In the case of video games, these games are on proprietary consoles. Yes. like Like... If you want a Nintendo game, you need a Nintendo console. Right. And if you want a PlayStation game, you need a PlayStation console. So that's what they're trying to keep, you know, they're trying mm -hmm. to they're trying to maintain that walled garden situation. Yeah. Uh there are ways to rip the cartridge yes. and make a digital library. Mm -hmm. I have a video on how to do it for old shit. Uh I have a little thing, a little thing yeah. this big. You put cartridges in, it just dumps everything onto an SD card. It's awesome. Um, Nintendo would argue that that's illegal because you're supposed to play Nintendo games on their consoles. Right. Even though I bought the fucking thing, I should be able to do whatever the hell I want with it. Yeah. I'm interested in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act now because uh, this, uh, this completely goes against the right to repair. Yeah. Because well, I bought the fucking thing. Yeah. I should be able to do what well, I want. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act and the right to repair are like two separate things. But this is this is what they're exercising for the DMCA of lockpick. Right. Yeah. But the DMCA was mostly just created to, uh, to protect. This is around the time Napster came out. Right. And like, you know, it was designed to protect entertainment media. Mm -hmm. Right to repair is mostly about you know, making sure you have the ability to, you have access to fix your devices and not just going to the manufacturer all the time. Right. No, so, I, I understand. Yeah. But I should, under the right to repair, I should have the ability to back up all of the things that I have, right? I have a huge library of Nintendo See, games. I don't know. Why can't I back up that huge library of games? Maybe I spill water on my cartridge. 
Right, but I, I don't know if that's technically... I don't know if that would technically classify as right to repair. It's it's more about... Because I, I don't think they should. classify media under that. Software. That, that, software. Software. That, well, software, but also like, you know, movies and music too. Right. So P- part of what I think... Well, I'm talking about this because we had a whole conversation about uh, uh, modding games. Right. And I think that should absolutely be covered under the yes. right to repair because yes. it's your game. Mm-hmm. If you're not selling it or, or, or breaking the copyright in any way, you should be able to modify your game. Yeah. You do whatever the hell you want with it because it's your game. Mm-hmm. You know, you paid for the software. Let me finagle it. Um, and they're arguing that... Uh, this breaks the Digital Millennium yeah. Copyright Act. In this case, it's because lockpick can be used to illegally circumvent copyright protection. Right. Which is true. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you can use lockpick to get your key off of your cartridge and then distribute that key. Yeah. Uh, and then other people can use that in their own emulators. Um that's just kind of an unfortunate side effect to being able to back up all of your stuff. You yeah. Know? Um, so I don't know how this would be argued in, in court. Like, I don't know how to tell a court like, hey, uh, people just want to back up their games. Yeah. They're not trying to distribute it and, and they're being punished for it. Well, there are those uh, court cases from back in the day against Sony. That K Jack literally just yeah. I always I always forget Connectics. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, there's then there's then the there's Gleam a, one. Yeah, then but, yeah. So those set the precedent that uh, having uh, digital backups of games that you purchased is legal. Right. Well. Yeah. No, th- those set the precedent that having a digital backup of the BIOS file of the of the of the fucking system. Well, that's that's what the case was about. But they right. use that as precedent to, in turn, say that digital right. backups of the games that you own right. is legal. Right. Because you bought the game. You can do with it what you will. The problem is Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft, they have the money and the resources and the lawyers to say, well you're just doing this so that you can yeah you know spread this around for piracy that's what i'm getting at is that yeah. these big companies have the money for all these lawyers yeah and there's nobody who can stand up for that and there's nobody who can fight for you know all of these modders and right. people who just want to play the game on whatever yeah. they they want there, there's there's no like H three H three stood up for uh copy yeah. f- for for DMCA claims against YouTubers because mm-hmm. they had the money to do it and yeah. they won and they tried to make that like a case law but it was a huge pain in the ass for them they spent a lot of money o- on it. There's nothing like that for uh video games right and I don't see a way to make a plan for that you know like yeah. because I just don't. The more I'm, I've been looking into this in the past few weeks, the more I'm seeing that the law just does not understand. Oh yeah, video games and software never has, anything. probably won't for a long time. So they're just taking the word of big corporations, yeah. and it's to our detriment. Yeah. And it's it's very scary to see all of this unfold. Yeah. Uh, one of I I talk about I've been talking about this a lot and I talked about it in the next Nintendo podcast too. You were there. I was there. <laughs> you I was you there. were watching. You weren't in this episode. You hear but, me say uh, the Star Wars movie Gary Witta wrote. Yes, that's true. Uh, we uh, we talk about more about the Point Crow situation. Uh, yeah. How he got uh, taken. He got some a bunch of his videos taken down by Nintendo because he modded uh, Zelda. Um, uh, I watched a video by Moon Channel. It's it's a lawyer who goes over the whole case. Yeah. And uh, we kept bringing up the Game Genie case. The, right. the case where uh, Nintendo tried to sue Game Genie and Game Genie won because mm-hmm. uh, they don't have any copyright, copyrighted Nintendo material anywhere on the marketing. Yeah. In the, in the booklet, 
there's the names of games and stuff yeah. but in any of the marketing there's no nintendo copyrighted material so they ended up winning the case so mm-hmm. there you go you're allowed to sell a modification of a nintendo game yeah because game genie set the case law and i think that's a perfect example of why mods should be legal but the law uses a different case law, which is mods of uh, Duke Nukem 3D that yes. were sold. And that's a much worse case because <laughs> those were obviously Duke Nukem assets that were being yeah. sold. In Point Crow's case, it's just a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a program that fucks with the file that you already have. He's not selling any Nintendo assets. So I think he's is much closer to Game Genie than it would be to the, to the Duke Nukem case. Right. That is scary that uh, uh they're using they they have they could be using the wrong case law to determine whether or not point crow yeah. sh- should be sued um so again i don't know what to do in that situation i don't i don't know in what oh we got a billion gifted subs just now oh geez look at the screen i, I see, forgot yeah. i have a whole thing for when people give us a billion gifted subs <laughs> Thank you, breadcrumbs, for fifty gifted subs. Damn. I very much. That is a lot of gifted subs. Yeah, I very much appreciate it. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know what to do about this. I'd love to be able to like, uh, talk to a bunch of like modders and stuff, and 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 try to get the word out and see if we can put some feelers out about yeah. it. But otherwise, I I. I, it, otherwise we're gonna just all get fucked we're just yeah. all gonna have it, it, it makes video games less fun yeah because part of the fun of any form of art isn't just like experience it experiencing it but also uh transforming it and interacting with it and how other people transform and interact art as well you know it it's part of like the whole reason why people want a healthy public domain mm-hmm. you know because otherwise like you can't you can't create new art when all art is locked behind you know copyright protection yeah and this goes along those lines people can create new and exciting games by you know modding and tinkering with the games they already own right you know counter-strike was a half-life mod that's like the ur example yeah so yeah and that but that you know valve like you know took it well, and, yeah, and, and, let, took and, it. and let them you let them even do it yeah i don't know how to stop this <laughs> alert <laughs> where is it i don't even know where is, is it there you go we'll, we'll just let that play yeah. out <laughs> sleeping toads tv thanks for uh gifting us up micro star versus uh form gen was the duke nukem case yes 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 Anyway, uh, breadcrumbs. Thank you very much for a billion subs. You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. And I'm sure people in the chat appreciate Mm -hmm. that too. Uh, Hunter X Hunter says, I would love to have a tier one sub from you because I look up to you and I love your (laughs) bits. Well, hope you're part of that giant dump that just happened. Uh, oh, he didn't get, oh no, no, that was somebody else. (laughs) Uh, no, he didn't get it. Oh. He didn't get it. <laughs> Beg some more. Maybe we'll get it. Uh, Sleeping Toast TV, thanks for the gift of sub. And there was more. There was uh, that Nuggets. Thanks for the three months. Take Bezos monies. Thank you. I will. And Richie to Retro, thanks for the 11 months. And damn it, Jeff. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate all you people. Uh, Yeah, I think that alert was going to go 50 times. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking broke it completely. Uh, no banana suit says the CMA had a shocking understanding of the video game landscape. If you read their document on their decision for the Microsoft merger, that's the um, that's the UK, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did, yeah, they did have a very good understanding yeah. of uh, uh, they had a much better understanding than I was expecting yeah. of video games. Mm-hmm. Um. I still think it was a weird... The cloud yeah, gaming that, take that was, was a little bit uh, of a weird take. Um, but I don't think American courts understand it all. No. And they, again, will will take all of the... Uh, they're going to... All of the information they're going to get is going to be from big companies. Yeah. 
I feel like we're like American courts and American government in particular is not going to really understand any form of technology, be it uh, video games, cell phones, uh, the internet, until like people born in the '90s start getting elected. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I I think that there needs to be a couple of tech advisors, yeah. like like in government. It's ridiculous that yeah. we have first of all ninety year olds running the yeah. country. <laughs> But also, like, these people don't fucking know. Even yeah. people who are younger, even people who are in office who are younger yeah. still have no idea what happens beyond Facebook. Yeah, you know? just watch the TikTok hearings. You'll you'll see what we're that talking about. So that was so sad. That was so sad to see. Like, the man answered all of their questions. At the end, they, they just said, like, well, China's still going to watch our stuff. So Yeah, they clearly had an agenda when they were asking him questions. Yeah. And they were trying to get him to say, you know, they, yeah. They weren't trying to get him to do anything. They were trying to scare the public yeah. into thinking there was something wrong there. Right. Completely forgetting about the social media app they use, which is probably most likely Facebook sells their information to the Chinese anyway. Yeah. So. It, it, it was scary to see every politician that was at that hearing just trying to scare people into joining their side of the argument. Yeah. Not necessarily even having anything to do with tiktok yeah they were just like you know like our kids are all gay now because yeah. of, because of people <laughs> like you <laughs> anyway uh uh this wasn't part of the news but i wanted to bring this up uh well why don't we do well this is we'll roll this into uh influencers being affected by nintendo's attacks we'll yes just talk, we'll just talk about this uh nintendo is not messing around when it comes to the tears of the kingdom leaks it's it's uh, so aggro right now, it seems to have unintentionally snagged innocent content creators simply sharing official footage of its copyright clampdown. God of War writer and streamer Alana Pierce said she was temporarily banned from Twitch after Nintendo DMCA'd her channel for reacting to an existing video preview of the game. Ever since copies of Tears of the Kingdom leaked early and started spreading online due to piracy, uh, Nintendo has been in a frenzy removing social media channels and Discord servers promoting leaked footage and secrets from the game. Uh, at first, slow to react, the company now appears to be hitting anything that remotely looks like a leak with a takedown notice. Uh, Pierce tweeted on May 8th, uh, LOL, my Twitch just got suspended midstream because I was reacting to Skill Up's uh, Zelda preview video. She was in the middle of streaming footage from the YouTube Skill Up's Nintendo sanctioned preview of Tears of the Kingdom when her channel was taken offline due to a copyright strike by the company. Absolute banger of a week this is, mm -hmm. she said. In a brief YouTube video on the subject, the content creator and former IGN host said it was her first ever Twitch suspension and wondered if it may have been the result of someone at the company seeing her channel and panicking that she was streaming a leaked copy of the game before actually watching to see what was going on. Yeah, I know. Probably. I know Nintendo doesn't like me. I've been told that, even though I have friends who work there, Pierce said jokingly. Uh, maybe it was targeted intentionally and they're just trying to get me not to be excited about Zelda. I don't know. She appealed the ban, however, and it has since been overturned as an erroneous DMCA takedown. But Pierce has not been the only one caught up in some overzealous attempt uh, to squash leaks. Nintendo YouTuber Austin John plays, you know him. Yep. I know him too. Uh, <laughs> shared a tweet with a screenshot from one of IGN's previews that was also seemingly removed at the company's request. I received a DMCA takedown of my tweet from anti-piracy Nintendo of Japan for my tweet about IGN's video and the word auto build he wrote on May 8th. Um, they took mine down but haven't done anything about mm -hmm. IGN's uh, 1.2 million uh, video. He, he it's It says in his tweet, this was a screenshot from IGN's video. Just to like protect themselves. Yeah. Uh, Didn't work. Yeah. And Nintendo even... If Nintendo even accidentally hit itself with a takedown notice. Yesterday, a Whoa. tweet by the official Zelda Twitter account in Japan temporarily had a media not, dis uh, media not displayed error after a screenshot from the game was removed in response to a report from the copyright holder. How the hell do you copyright claim yourself? One commenter responded. Redfall fell into a similar trap after leaking earlier this month, striking art from the game's official Twitter account by accident. Oh, this is funny. The takedown is coming from inside the house. <laughs> uh, Nintendo's crackdown is part of a broader effort to ex uh, exert total control over its games and how they appear online. 
After the Tears of the Kingdom art book was leaked in February, the company subpoenaed Discord for the personal information of one of the users involved in the post about it. Uh, popular Zelda YouTubers like Point Crow recently saw a number of old Breath of the Wild videos nuked from their channel because they associated with modded content. Uh, we'll see if things cool down after Tears of the Kingdom comes out on May 12th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, obviously... It's like an insane exercise yeah. of their copyright. It, it's it's mostly automatic. It has yeah. to be because uh, I, I, I think it's mostly automatic. And then they probably have like they're supposed to do manual reviews and they're yeah. just going uh, reject, 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 like over and over yeah. again to the point where they do it to themselves mm -hmm. uh, over an image. Yeah, that's insane. That's Usually it's yeah. like videos and like trailers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if you repost a trailer there, they, you might get dinged for that because that's easy to get automatically dinged for. But uh, a picture? Yeah. That's crazy. And how are they even able to tell the difference between a picture of Tears of the Kingdom and a picture of Breath of the Wild? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, it, it, well, with their automatic like they software. Can. They've been taking down stuff from Breath of the Wild, too. That's a good yeah. point. That's a very good point. I mean, I, It makes it really hard to make content around yeah. this, this stuff. They I just mean, don't want you to make the content. I get why they're doing it, because the game's coming out like soon, and they want you to go out and buy it. And like they're really protective about you know making sure people buy their IP, but at the same time, who's not buying this game? Yeah, like they know it's going to be their big. Well, that's hit. why they they're it's gonna... able to do this, like because they know that they don't need people talking about the game. Right, everyone's going to buy it anyway. Yeah, so why go through so all the trouble of like copyright striking everybody and alienating a bunch of fans? Yeah, like it doesn't seem worth it to me. President Linkold in the chat says, "Will my Switch get DMCA'd for running Zelda on launch day? Maybe. No, it might. Be, Maybe. You know? Did I'm, you check the terms of services of the Switch Online update? <laughs> I'm gonna try to play it like a few hours early. Right. Like at like eight o'clock on mm -hmm. Thursday, and we'll see. I'm gonna be on Twitch. This could be the end of Wolf Day. Like, I could get banned. Yeah. It, you know, it just that would be great actually yeah. if I got banned because then I'd have something to talk about. Um." But yeah, th at that point, it will have been out in Australia and stuff, yeah. and in, in Japan. So, but not in America. I don't see a way where they would have the right to do that. Well, right. the I mean, they have the the right to their copyright. They could stop anybody from yeah. streaming the game for some weird reason. Um. Anyway, yeah, th th we, we, I've never seen Nintendo take. I've never seen Nintendo be this over the top with with their takedowns yeah this is extreme even for them yeah like they're always this they're always crazy and protective over their stuff that there's a long history of them uh taking down people reposting trailers or trying yeah. to claim uh, uh people's videos that have uh trailers in them or even screenshots that like i've been affected by that yeah. in the past um but this is they're misfiring so much more yeah. than they've ever misfired yeah, no, and, this and, and is... all around zelda stuff yeah. it, i've never seen it the lead up to any game i've never seen it this bad yeah there was the 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 smash brothers stuff where people were they just got the game like weeks early and they yeah. were streaming it and stuff but that was just a handful this yeah. seems like a lot mm-hmm uh one of the i saw a guy on on uh twitter let me see if i can find his name uh he didn't get a lot the the, the tweet didn't seem to get much traction which uh upset me because uh here is smarpy smarpy uh tweeted uh nintendo just filed a copyright strike down on my zelda video that only used zelda tears of the kingdom trailer footage I simply talked and speculated about items that were shown in their trailers and official images shown in the hands-on gameplay that they invited creators to. This is messed up. I'm privating my other videos in fear of losing my channel if they strike down others. This is absolutely mm. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, they're using strikes, which yeah. could ruin a channel. Mm -hmm. It makes it uh, very difficult to make content around this stuff yeah. and not even worth it in a lot of cases. Yeah. Like... I wouldn't want to do any Zelda preview stuff, even though here we are doing it here. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it on a main channel. I, yeah. I, I don't want. I don't want that smoke. 
Also, I wanted to bring up uh, that article that you just read about the DMCA takedowns mm-hmm. uh, is a Kotaku article. Kotaku uh, is very upset because um, they uh, didn't, they're blacklisted from Nintendo. Right. They didn't get a preview of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. Uh, and th- this is because of uh, Metroid Dread. They like basically taught people how to emulate Metroid Dread yes. in, in an article. And mm-hmm. Nintendo was like, all right, fuck you guys. You never get into a, a video game from us again. Uh, and then, so so they're all upset that they didn't, they're not getting Tears of the Kingdom right. previews. Freaking Luke Plunkett tweeted, for the record, this is how I feel about publisher blacklists. And it's a picture of a U.S. fighter pilot with uh, rising sun and Nazi flags. Right. <laughs> I think those are hit the pilot's kills. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Meaning like every, those are supposed to be like developers that Kotaku gets blacklisted from. So that's like a kill count. Well, he, yeah. Well, I, I, the way I interpreted it was he's the American and yes. Nintendo are the Nazis. He Nintendo not, Nintendo's not just the Nazis. Nintendo and every company that gets blacklisted from that Kotaku gets blacklisted from is a flag on okay. that. Yeah. So because I know Ubisoft blacklisted them mm-hmm. a while back. I think one other company blacklisted them. So they're a very blacklist heavy company is what join the fucking club yeah like it happens if if, if you're gonna report if, if you're gonna i, I mean I, I i sympathize with games journalists because i yeah. think that uh it's a different job than what we have as, right as influencers uh there is it, it requires a little bit more professionalism yeah and uh but at the same time people do want it, it it's harder. It's yeah. harder for them. It, yeah. it, they exist in a, in a in a in an area where they're held to a different standard. Yes, but at the same time, they also want this sort of like uh, uh, camaraderie and then and the and the and the relationship that influencers yeah get to have. have it's like this weird, uh, not edge lord, but like a like a progressive edge lord. I guess you could say. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're yeah. they're really aggressive in like the way they handle things, including like you know progressive politics and uh, relationships with game with game companies and things like that. And sometimes it's like too much to handle. I I, I see Kotaku trying to take on the uh, like guise of influencers sometimes when they post an article that's mm-hmm. like uh uh I don't know like. Redfall sucks and there's no excuse for something yeah. like this. And it's like, all right, dude, well, why don't you talk a little bit more professional about it? But yeah. like, I could post that and nobody would care, you know, because I could yeah. just say whatever the hell I want because yeah. everybody knows my personality. Yeah. They associate my personality with the videos that I make. Right. Whereas Kotaku has a bunch of people working for them. So the personality is more of like an, an amalgamous yeah. thing. Um, so again, they exist in a weird sort of area that i guess is harder to navigate yeah uh they're held to a higher standard but if you're gonna post articles like that you know that a company's you know gonna have a problem with you're gonna have to expect to get blacklisted from that company i know oh, a couple of weeks ago they posted they wrote about i don't know i didn't read the article but so i don't know if they actually posted pictures from it but they wrote about the the art book leak yeah and people were like getting mad at them like for posting the artwork leak, like basically coming to Nintendo's defense. Yeah. The thing is like, that's news. Like the Zelda art book leaking is news. Yeah. And if Kotaku or any video game journalism website reports on news that they think their readers might want to know about. Yeah. Then they should be able to write about it. You know, that's not the problem even i personally i don't even think posting pictures from the art book is necessarily a problem so long as you don't go overboard and post the whole thing or post you know spoilery stuff i think nintendo uh i think kotaku's really good at saying a piece of news and then under the fold saying spoilers yeah don't go any further if you don't want spoilers yeah they're pretty good with that yeah and I agree that if it's news, they should be able to yeah. report on it. And but there's there's going to be companies that get pissed. If they get pissed to the point... Companies like Nintendo will get pissed to the point where they're going to have no journalists 
able yeah. to preview their games anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's going to get to that point. I don't fault Kotaku for writing an article about the art book leak because that, that you're right. That is news. Teaching people how to emulate Metroid Dread, maybe a little over. Right. Again. For a company like Kotaku. Yeah. I think that there's plenty of other people like Retro Dodo who could have made an article about that. Reporting on the fact that people are emulating Metroid Dread is one yes. thing. Teaching them is another. That, the article yeah. is still up. Yeah. And they changed the whole thing to be about how other people are yes, emulating Yes, I remember Dread. when that happened. Yeah. So that's the way they should have done it in the first yeah. place. If they're going to be held to this higher journalistic mm-hmm. standard instead of teaching people how to fucking yeah. steal, you know? Um, anyway, Mega Dragon, 100 bits. Hello. Hey, Bob. I've been thinking of giving Destiny 2 a shot on PS5. Do you think it's still worth it for someone new to the series? And it, if it's worth the 150 gigabytes of storage that game asks for? Jeez. I don't know if I can answer that because I'm definitely uh, upset with uh, Destiny because you can't play the... I told you this. You can't play the original campaign yeah. anymore. They just deleted the original mm-hmm. campaign. It just doesn't exist anymore. So uh, I don't know the answer to that. I tried picking it up you're gonna have to play the dlc you can't like you could maybe play for like an hour or two right with the free-to-play stuff otherwise you have to buy some of the dlc so maybe give it a shot for an hour or two i mean it's free so see if you like it but yeah they don't really tell you anything the the campaign i think is necessary for the game to like show you around but they don't they don't they don't help you at all anymore Anyway, where are we? Uh, oh, we were talking about uh, the how Nintendo's Nazis. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, they may be Nazis, but they're also um, not releasing hardware this year. Oh. Uh, Switch sales slow down. Switch Switch sales are slowing down, and no new hardware confirmed for this fiscal year. In its results for the fiscal year ending on March 31st, 2023, Nintendo has reported that Switch hardware sales declined by 22% as the company only sold only sold 17.79 <laughs> million consoles during that 12-month period. Nintendo expects this decline to continue through its next fiscal year, uh, which will end on March 31st, 2024, and is predicting an additional 16.5% uh, decline or around 15 million consoles that will be sold over the next year. In total, Nintendo has sold 125.6 million Switch consoles since it launched in 2017. By comparison, uh, the PlayStation 5 sales stand at 38.4 million lifetime sales to date, with 6.3 million consoles shipping in January to March period this year. Uh, Nintendo Switch has entered its seventh year since launch, and while it and while and while it will become more challenging to maintain the same sales momentum as before, our goal is to have more consumers continuing to play Nintendo Switch for longer, leading to maximize sales, Nintendo said in a statement. The global semiconductor shortage was partially attributed to the decline in sales, as well as decrease in sales from last year's holiday season. The company has also once... The company has once again confirmed that no new hardware will ship this fiscal year, and in a call after the financial results were posted, uh, President Shuntaro Furukawa added that Nintendo's 15 million Switch sales goal for the next year will be a challenge. Sustaining the Switch's sales momentum will be difficult in its seventh year, Furukawa said to Bloomberg. Uh, our goal... Our goal of selling 15 million units this fiscal year is a bit of a stretch, but we will do our very best to bolster demand going into the holiday season that we can uh, that we can achieve the goal. On a software front, Nintendo has now shipped 1.036 billion Switch games since 2017. That's great. Beating the record of 948.7 million shipped uh, games that was previously held by the Nintendo DS family of handheld consoles. Financially, Nintendo said net sales were down 5.5% to $12.56 billion and net profit decreased by 9.4% at $3.2 billion. While game sales were down 8.9% year on year, they were still strong according to Nintendo and saw 213.96 million units shipped during the fiscal year. It's worth noting that digital sales, including Switch Online subscriptions, did increase by 12.2%. 12.7% during this period, according to, uh, and accounted for $3 billion in revenue. Uh, Scarlet and Violet shipped tw- uh, 22.1 million copies as of March 31st this year. Fire Emblem Engage shipped 1.61 million. 
Uh, Mario Strikers Battle League shipped three uh, three point one million, and Splatoon three shipped ten point six million units within their respective launch dates until the end of the twenty twenty three fiscal year. Thirty five uh, titles sold over one million units each, and of those games, twenty two of them were published by Nintendo. Uh, looking forward, we have Tears of the Kingdom releasing this week, Pikmin four in July. And expansions for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet arriving later this year, which the company expects to deliver some serious sales momentum. Our software publishers also plan to release a wide variety of titles, and we look and we will work to invigorate the platform by supplementing existing titles with continuous streams of new titles and add-on content. So that's uh, all that they had to say during their uh, uh, earnings report. Yeah, I saw. So they want to sell 15 million switches in this fiscal year, which yeah. just started basically. So yeah. they're saying that's going to be a hard goal to achieve. Uh, Spawn Wave tweeted that they're insane for thinking they can do that. Why though? Why is that so crazy? It, They've sold 150 million so far. It, it sounds crazy because. We're seven years into the Switch's life cycle. Yeah. And by this point, selling double, you know, double digit million units of a system is pretty far fetched. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't think, you know, it's very rare that you're selling 10 million units in like your twilight years. Mm-hmm. So for for someone to hear that Nintendo wants to sell 15 million, million units in its seventh year does sound pretty insane, especially when we have you know, the series X and the PlayStation five out and also all this competition from like the steam deck and the ROG ally and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think people think it's a little crazy for Nintendo to say such a thing at the same time though, you know, we've seen like year on year on year, Nintendo is still selling switches. Like yeah, people, people are buying multiples, you know, people are buying switch. They count the sales of switch lights and switch OLEDs at like in the same family. So yeah, I mean, I'm thinking they could reach this because of tears of the kingdom. Yeah. Cause tears of the, tears of the kingdom is coming out this week. Like, yeah, people are, people are rebuying the switch to get that special edition. They're rebuying it to get that. Maybe people played the, Oh, people played breath of the wild haven't touched their switch in a while and they're like well i have the old switch maybe i want it or my switch is old and shitty maybe i should get a new cool one or maybe it's been seven fucking years like maybe people are interested in zelda but they skipped breath of the wild because it was on new hardware that they that they were not uh interested in um i think that there's plenty of opportunity for them to to hit that 15 million uh just with tears of the kingdom alone but I'm sure they'll have some other stuff that we don't necessarily know about. Yeah. I don't think Pikmin's selling anything. I don't Pik- think anybody gives a shit about Pikmin. Pikmin's going to sell a couple million units, but it's not going to be like a needle mover the way yeah. Breath of the Wild will be. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think it's going to be for sure. And into, uh, Switch is winding down this year. Yeah. And, and next year, they'll have something else. Yeah. I mean, they've got to at this point. Yeah. So so they're not doing as good as they did in previous years. Nobody is, really. Cause, yeah. Because of covid was such a boom for entertainment yeah um and also yeah it's the seventh year of the switch so of yeah. course it's going to be doing worse than it did before but mm-hmm. uh they'll have something else next year and they'll they'll be right back up so uh, i i think that this is tracking still incredibly well for them yeah so um anyway Metendu says price drop maybe and Zelda will push it this fiscal year. We also don't know the lineup for quarter three or quarter four. Yeah, I yeah. genuinely think that we don't know the lineup because there's a new console. And and it's not that they're waiting to announce things for the new console. I think that they're just they just don't want to release things too late in the Switch's life cycle when they already announce the new console right. because they don't because people are going to hold off on buying a Switch for the new console instead. Yeah. Um, anyway. Ken Patchy says, What mic would you recommend to somebody getting new getting into streaming? Uh, a cheap one. Yeah. Uh, Get a cheap one. Don't spend more than 100 bucks. The Rode Pod mic or the Audio Technical one that I have that I don't remember off the top of my head because it's not a name. It's just like a string of 20... letters. Twenty. Uh, twenty forty. I think that's it. I uh, got the pod mic and it's it's good. Oh it's yeah, good. 
Yeah. Yeah. The Audio Technica AT 2040. That's the one I have. Yeah. That's a good mic. The 2020 is good, but we used to, we used the 2020. Yeah. That the was three people in the chat wrote 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it so confidently wrote 2020 yeah. thinking that's what you had. We used to use the 2020 um, when we first started this podcast and yeah. uh, one of them just straight up died. Yeah. That they were good mics. Yeah. It, one just kind of fizzled out. I've burned through two of these SM7Bs now. I fucking hate these now. <laughs> I have a vendetta against these now. Okay. Because they're $400. Yeah. And you, they're very quiet, so you kind of need a cloud lifter. Right. We don't have them now. We're just kind of cranking the volume on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so $500, basically. And they're they're okay. They're just yeah. okay. How do you burn through mics? They just die. They just yeah. die. Nothing lasts they forever. Everything working. ends. Yeah. Um, well, you may wake up dead tomorrow. So yeah, I love my I love my pod mic. It's good. Uh, they're releasing a new version of the Rode pod mic that is a hundred dollars more, but has a USB input also. So it's XLR and USB. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. There's also a version of this Shure mic that has a uh, USB input. That's probably better than this. Is that the the Rode that you're talking about? Is that the one where the uh, USB port is in the XLR port? No, no. Because no. I saw a mic that it's was like, like it's that. like right under. Yeah, it. I saw a mic where the XL the USB port is in the XLR. That's port. insane. I forgot who makes that, but I was that's like, that's crazy. actually cool. So yeah, that's uh. Also, like I have zero mic technique, so yeah. like I put a million effects on all of my streams and my videos and mm -hmm. stuff because I talk like this sometimes, and yeah. then I gotta talk like that, you know, and I try to normalize it so it all sounds yeah. normal. So whenever I'm on like another person's podcast or somebody else is recording me, I sound all fucked up. Yeah. Um, and uh, so all of our mics record kind of low volume, and then in 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 the program it like boosts the volume yeah. like like a lot so that it doesn't peak. Uh, because of that, when I'm in Discord just talking to people, I sound really quiet. Yeah. So I've been trying to find a way to have that and not happen. Anyway, uh. I use a FET head with my SM7B. It works well. Is that like a cloud lifter? It sounds like a cloud lifter. I saw, I was, I was, because I was looking up cloud lifters. So I thought my mic might need one. And I found like, there's I, a, I, I got one. Just, there, I got two just laying around now. There's a lot of companies that just make, basically make cloud lifters for like half the price than like, the actual cloud yeah. lifter. It's $100 for yeah. a cloud lifter. It's yeah. insane. But if you want one, so, I'll, I'll, take I'll it. No, we don't, we, we, uh, one of them is yours, technically. <laughs> Uh, but then you need another XLR cable also. And that's why I wanted to get rid of the cloud lifter because yeah. I had too many things in the chain. Yeah. Another problem that I had <laughs> was the stupid XLR cable yeah. was routed under my desk yeah. and it was routed too close to a surge protector. Uh, so it was picking up a lot of interference. Yeah. And I didn't re I took me forever to figure out what that was. So uh, I got a super expensive shielded XLR cable and then routed it like away from that thing. Yeah. And I didn't want to get two of them. Yeah. So I just got rid of the cloud lifter. Anyway, everything sounds great now. There you go. Uh, there's a, there's less, a lot less bass in the Rode pod mic than there is in this thing. Okay. But I just added bass. There you go. And it's fine. Anyway. Oh, yeah. You don't need a cloud lifter with certain uh, uh, interfaces either. Some of right. them have cloud lifters built in. Yeah. Like, no banana suit says mm -hmm. the Elgato wave. But I got the fucking focus right interface because everybody tells me that that's like the industry standard. Is that the red one? Yeah. Yeah. My old interface was great. The uh, the Roland. Thing, yeah. I it still, had a compressor in it. I still use the Roland. Yeah. Until it died. Uh, Mine just died. Everything dies. It fizzled out. It just started getting shitty. Is there a way? I needed to. What was I? I was trying to use the Roland for a way that I don't normally use the Roland for. And now I don't remember. Oh, no, that wasn't. I don't remember. Never trying mind. to make a sandwich out of it? No. You can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, it just, the butter wasn't spreading yeah. as much as I want. Yeah, no, you can't do that. It's not made for that. Uh, Jay Cannon says, is the cloud lifter just fan of power? No. Uh, cloud lifter literally just take just boosts the gain on the mic. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Clockwork, thanks for the three months. Thanks for the great podcast episodes week in and week out. Cheers. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I appreciate it. Hey, do you think we got through 50 gift sub notifications yet? 
<laughs> I, see. I would hope so. You know, I don't even know. We got a show to run. Okay, I think I think I think it's I think it's gone. Okay, <laughs> I think we did it. Um, all right, what else do we have to talk about? Twenty twenty three video game Hall of Fame inductees. Yay! Oh, what a class! Yay! Yay! Four inductees joined the me? World Video Game Hall of Fame at the Strong National Museum of Play. Those games are Barbie Fashion Designer, Computer Whoa. Space, The Last of Us, and Wii Sports. What is Computer Space? Uh, Wii Sports? Yeah. Hell yeah. That deserves it. So, uh, is, so does The Last of Us. Computer Space, a title inspired by previous World Video Game Hall of Fame inductee Space War, broke ground for being the first commercially available video game. Prior to Computer Space's 1971 release, there was no commercially available there was no commercial video game industry. So Computer Space was the first uh commercially available video game. That, oh. Yeah. Here it is. That's it. Wow. 70s video games were bad. So what does it play on? <laughs> it's an it's an arcade. Oh. Yeah. Commercially available meaning like people can buy it and like put it up in their stores and you put quarters in and uh, okay yeah okay so like not a home unit correct okay this looks terrible well yeah it's the first commercially available video game space war uh a title inspired by previous world of inductee space war okay okay space war is the one that's on the analog pocket correct that came with the analog yeah. pockets like fpga core mm-hmm Cool. Uh, why is Barbie Fashion Designer in here? Uh, Barbie Fashion Designer became a jumping off point for the girls' games movement and shook up the software and gaming scene, set, uh, said collections manager Christy Hurst. Uh, it also sparked important questions and debate. What does it mean to be a game for girls? Should there even be a game for girls? In quotes. Uh, what are the implications of these games? What are the consequences of gendering games? Uh, underscore says i think barbie had an insane amount of sales for in its genre for the time so yes that makes sense because i guess games were seen as being a boy's thing well what happened was originally like when atari and ColecoVision were out they marketed video games as a family thing like the way they marketed board games then there was the crash and then when nintendo came in at the time, the toy aisle was segregated boys and girls. So Nintendo was selling the NES as a toy, and they picked the boy side thinking they can get more sales out of there. And since then, games have generally been regarded as a male hobby, even though millions of women play yeah. video games. In fact, depending on how you calculate it, more girls play video games than boys. Yeah. So I think... Yeah, Barbie fashion designer. I mean, it's the first mainstream. There have been video games for girls before, but this is like the first mainstream one that like broke sales records. And stuff. Yeah. Also, the fact that it's like a fashion design game, like put aside the fact that it's Barbie, the fact that it's like a fashion designing game, that like itself is like kind of changes the way what you think of a video game, you know, because you think of a video game as something skill based and reflex based whereas a fashion barbie fashion designer is your designing clothes yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a sim or yeah or, or exactly whatever. so uh yeah that that makes sense i i like there's a statistic i read a while ago talking about how uh 40 percent of people who play games are or identify as female yes um you just don't hear about it as much because either they're playing like a lot of them play mobile games and stuff and they don't engage in gaming culture because gaming culture is so heavily swayed towards one side and so heavily misogynistic yes if you've ever been in a call of duty lobby or even a valorant lobby valorant a lot of it's it's very colorful yes and there's a lot of female representation in the game yes so there's a lot of women that play that game Mm -hmm. but they don't talk right because everybody's Dudes toxic they're everything. fucking yeah. horrible it's horrible out there did you ever see this is like from years ago but it was a, it was a, co- a college humor video where they flipped it it was yes. one guy <laughs> playing in a, in a lobby full of girls and all yes. the girls just sexually harassed him yes that was funny yes 
I play with Hannah all the time. Right. And her name is she doesn't talk. She doesn't right. want to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. And her name is Small Dog Mom. Yeah. Like in the in in Valorant. And every single time we're in a, lo a public lobby. Yeah. What type of dog is it? <laughs> everybody tries to you know yeah. get get in in some yeah, way yeah. you know. I remember the 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 um. There's a, I was watching a review of the Horizon Worlds, you know, the Facebook um, metaverse mm -hmm. app that crashed and burned. And the reporter was like reporting on the lobby and like the experience of like wearing VR and like trying to like help her coworkers navigate the space. And every time like they heard her talk, there would just be a bunch of 14 year old boys going, hey, that sounded like a girl. That was a girl. <laughs> Dude, there's a girl here. Yep. 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 So that makes it a lot still of sense. happens in the year of our Lord 2023. Absolutely. Uh, uh, okay. So I think this is a, this is, this is a good, usually list. we have a problem with the uh, Hall of Fame inductees, the video game yeah. Hall of Fame inductees. I think every single one of them deserves the, the place. Yes. Uh, last year's inductees for the record was Ocarina of Time, Miss Pac-Man, Sid Meier's Civilization, and DDR. Those are all pretty good too. Yeah. So I'd like, say. this is a good selection of games. It's not a big selection, and honestly, like Barbie Fashion Designer and Computer Space are not like, you know, the big names, mm -hmm. you know, to go in because I think, uh, finalists like these people, these games didn't get uh the induction, but the finalist uh list included. Age of Empires, Angry Birds, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, FIFA, GoldenEye, NBA 2K, Quake, and Wizardry. Like, there are some heavy hitters on there. All of those deserve it as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, they're not... Like, this is a good list. I don't know Wizardry. That... I've heard of it, but I, I couldn't tell you... I couldn't tell you shit about it. Mm -hmm. um, this is opposed to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductions, uh, inductees this year, which I got... I got bones to pick with that. Let me tell you what. Who 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 is it? Uh, the official inductions are Kate Bush, Rage Against the Machine, Missy Elliott, Cheryl Crow, George Michael, and the Spinners. If Rage Against the Machine doesn't reject their Hall of Fame induction, they're fucking phonies. <laughs> well, I know Tom Morello like posted something in his usual Tom Morello self, thankful, but then he went on and made you feel bad about all the atrocities in the world. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's going to be such a weird induction if they show up. And it's like, because you know Zach Della Roca is just going to bring the crowd down. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know the only reason why Kate Bush is being inducted is because of Stranger Things. Like, we're, like, that's not a, that's not like a I don't know secret, any, right? I don't know anything. Because her that. song was like, she had a big song in Stranger Things this past season. And, like, it had, like, a billion streams in a day. And now I guess the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is like, oh, yeah, maybe we should induct her because the kids are into Kate Bush. I, I had no idea. Also, oh, also, God. let me oh, just go boy. keep going on this. So George Michael, right? We're yeah. all familiar with him. Yeah. Uh, did, the, did the original Limp Bizkit Faith. Um, <laughs> so he got nominated because now they have a fan poll. Fans can uh, write in and and select a nominee to go in. Oh, okay. Uh, he was up against actual rock bands like Iron Maiden and Soundgarden. And so they picked George Michael instead. Wait. What's wrong with what's wrong with George Michael? Over Iron Maiden and Soundgarden, actual rock and roll bands, rock and roll bands well, who, not, who would normally not get in because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has a bias over heavier acts. What what is George Michael then if he's not rock and roll? What he, is he he's not as rock and roll as Soundgarden and, and Iron Maiden. I can tell you that. What is he pop? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll allow it. And another thing. Another oh, thing. Yeah. So Judas Priest got in. At the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which they deserved. However, they were not part of the actual induction finalists because you only, only induct five artists. What they were inducted as was uh, Excellence in Musical Achievement, which used to be known as the Sideman category. Ooh. So, you know, one of the most important uh, heavy metal bands of all time, the forerunners of the new wave of British heavy metal. Oh, you guys are just Sidemen. Hate hate everything. Judas Priest is okay. Judas Priest is good. They're Judas okay. Priest is very good. No, all right. Uh, didn't she break the record for top th top song in three different decades or something? I, I guess Kate Bush. Uh, yes. Look, no shade against Kate Bush, but like you, like I'm I'm not I'm not speaking out of turn here, right? Like <laughs> she would not have gotten in any other year. Um. 
How is Goldeneye not in the rock uh rock and roll? How is Goldeneye <laughs> not in the video game hall of fame yet? I don't know. I feel like they're much I I feel like the video game hall of fame is much more like selective mm -hmm. about it. Like they they want to get it right every year. So because that's, that's why like you know, not every game you think should be in the Hall of Fame is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, they, they, maybe it just hasn't been out long enough. They got to do like 10 games a year. Well, no, because we is we sports is getting in. I No, I mean like they have, they, they only induct once a year. Yeah. They need to induct a lot more games every yeah. year. There's so many games. Yeah. That I need don't to be in know there. how... Uh, how long they, they haven't been doing it that long i know that i know that's what i'm saying the yeah. games industry is over 40 years yeah. old like you're, is it 50 oh my god it's over 50 years i old. mean if when did i'm i'm counting the seven computer space came out in 71 so yeah that's crazy yeah yeah they have so much ground to cover yeah um they're unveiling unveiling the new building this year for the video game hall of fame or just the strong Museum. Tynology is from uh, wherever the strong, upstate New York, wherever yeah, the yeah. strong museum is. Um, that's Are you going? Are you going to see that? <laughs> Rochester, there you go. Yeah. I found the College Humor video. It's so good, but it did not age well. Ha, ha, ha. This oh, probably not. not. No. At all. <laughs> no. I, I think that's the point because yeah. that's just what it's like yeah. in the lobby. It is not pc in these lobbies yeah. unfortunately so the strong museum has only been inducting games since 2015 mm -hmm. and there are 40 games in there total right now okay and i mean it's not you know they're they're all bangers don't get me wrong but mm -hmm. i think you're right i think they do need to start they need to step it up yeah like world of warcraft doom pong gta 3 the oregon trail zelda one zelda the, the sims Sonic yeah, one. Those yeah. all deserve it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the Phil Spencer interview. Oh, that's boy. Gonna, yeah. I forgot that's a whole can of worms. We got. That is to. such a can of worms. Oh, man. Uh, it's been a rough couple of weeks for Xbox. That's had fans questioning the state of Microsoft's console gaming business. First, there was news of a 30% drop in Xbox hardware revenue, followed by the CMA's decision to block Microsoft's giant $69 billion Activision Blizzard acquisition, topped off by Redfall launching earlier this week to a lukewarm reception. When you combine all of this with the quiet year of Xbox releases in 2022, Xbox fans are wondering when Microsoft is going to deliver a slew of AAA games like we saw in the Xbox 360 generation. We're not in the business of out-consoling Sony or out-consoling Nintendo, uh, says Xbox chief Phil Spencer in an interview with Kind of Funny Games. Uh, Spencer said something similar to The Verge in 2019 with Microsoft's gaming strategy focusing across Xbox, PC, cloud, and mobile, not just consoles anymore. Spencer doesn't think that just building great games is enough to win the console to win in consoles anymore quote i see the commentary that if you just build great games everything will turn around uh it's just not true that if we go off and build great games all of a sudden you're going to see console share si shift in some dramatic way we lost the worst generation to lose in the xbox one generation where everybody built their digital library of games we want our xbox community to feel awesome but this idea that if we just focus on more great games on our console that we somehow are go that we somehow we're going to win the console race doesn't really lay into the reality of most people. There is no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. That's the That quote happened at the end of the podcast. Yeah. And that's the one that is getting the most uh, uh, press. Yeah. Because that is kind of an insane thing to say. Like a lot of people are uh, hard on Microsoft because they have no first party games. Like... Mm -hmm. Or, or they have a lot of the, the biggest ones that they were, they have nothing. And the ones that they have, like Halo, end up lacking. And that yeah. Redfall comes out and that's a flop. And, yeah. and it's also lacking. And the, the most of this podcast was about how bad Redfall was. Yeah. And Phil Spencer just kind of taking the L on it. And yeah. also, a couple days before this podcast, 
he that they got rejected by the uh, CMA yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, so it's it was really the worst time to have this podcast. Yeah, he said he he was like, dude, I'm having a horrible week. <laughs> Just <laughs> kind of crazy. But I think that quote is interesting because like. Would you expect like somebody from Sony to like say something equivalent? Like if they were in no. last place? Yeah. No, I, I like, think that this sh- was incredibly candid. They yeah. ba- basically admitted that Redfall is a bad game. He admitted that Redfall is a bad game and that ex- like if the, for the first time ever, I'm like convinced that like he doesn't believe Xbox is a big name in gaming right now. Because like well, you throughout- lie enough in court, you're going to start to believe it. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> no, but I, I, I think this further proves that they just don't see themselves in the same sort of console race anymore. Well, they're they're, they're one of the big three console manufacturers, but they're so far behind Microsoft and uh, they're so far behind Sony and Nintendo. They want to compete in different ways. Well, I don't think it's that they want to compete in different ways. I think they have to compete in different ways because they're so far behind. Well, well, Everybody's problem with this quote that he has is that everybody thinks that they have so many first party studios, just make good games in those first party studios and people are going to want to buy Xbox. Right. And I think there is some truth to that. I think they could just make a lot of first party games and they could end up competing with Sony's first party mm-hmm. games and Nintendo's first party games. But that would be so hard for them to do, especially starting because because of how far behind they are in the yeah. past couple of years. Starting now, making all of these great first party games is going to put them back even further. Yeah. So I think that would be a very hard route for them to. It's not an easy thing to do. It's just make a bunch of great games. Yeah. I think it would be easier for Microsoft to come out on top in other ways like they're trying to do, like with Game Pass, like with building a better PC gaming platform, uh, allowing people to get Xbox games in as many different ways as possible. I think that's the best way for Microsoft to make the most money out of gaming right now. And I think that that's what Phil Spencer's strategy is with Microsoft. But I don't necessarily think that means don't make... (laughs) <laughs> uh, you got to use these first party yeah. studios you bought so many yeah you got to start letting them make games yeah the problem is they did and redfall sucks. yeah uh spencer is probably right here but microsoft's challenges with halo infinite and redfall have fans worried about some of its biggest titles that are designed for xbox fans and xbox game pass after all when uh, microsoft spent 7.5 billion on bethesda it was about delivering great exclusive games for game pass uh, I'm kind of upset with myself, admits Spencer, discussing the Redfall launch with Kind of Funny Games. Uh, the critical response was not what we wanted. While he praised the developers at Arcane, Spencer admits that the team didn't hit their own internal goals when it launched. Uh, all eyes are now on Starfield, with Microsoft confirming this week that it will show off new gameplay during its Starfield Direct event on June 11th. Uh, after the controversy surrounding the lack of 60 frames per second mode with for Redfall, Spencer also said that Xbox will make it clear to fans this summer about whether Starfield will have its own 60 frames per second mode on console. Uh, so what's for what's the future for Xbox right now? The console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt, uh, said Spencer. Uh, we'll stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up uh, as being a better green version of what the blue guys do. And I'm going to say there is not a win for Xbox by staying in the wake of someone else. Uh, We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Pass, the stuff we do with xCloud, and the way we build our games. And I think that that's pretty valid, the way he ended that off. Because you don't want to just be the competition. You know, you got to have something that's different. And I think... Microsoft does a lot of things differently than PlayStation that are better than what PlayStation does. Yes. And PlayStation does a couple things differently. Like, for example, make a bunch of great first-party games. (laughs) But that's really all that Sony has. Yeah. They make great first-party games. Everything else about the Sony platform sucks. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. I love everything about the Xbox platform except for the first-party games. Yeah. So I think that there was another really important thing that he said during the podcast that I don't see many people reporting on. He admitted that they knew that Redfall was not going to run above 30 frames per second at launch. Yeah. And he admitted to saying that it was going to at launch. He, He said our biggest, he said his biggest regret was 
knowing that it wasn't going to run at 60 frames per second, but saying that it would anyway. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of just flew under the radar. Yeah. And that's kind of like a huge deal. Yeah. Also, during the podcast, they talked about how uh, he, he said going forward, he wants to uh, be more uh, proactive with first party studios when they acquire them. Yeah. Like uh, they acquired uh, Bethesda and Arcane during the Redfall development. Yeah. So instead of going into Arcane and offering their resources, they said, do whatever you do. We're sure it's going to be great. Yeah. And that is kind of a great strategy because yeah. that's what you'd hope when a big corporation uh, uh, takes a bunch of creative people. You want them to be able to do what they want. Yeah. So Microsoft was like, you make great games, you're going to do a great job. In this case, they didn't. Yeah. And there was really no way for Microsoft to know that. At the tail end of, of development, when they realized it wasn't going to perform very well, they tried to get their other first party studios involved to help. Yeah. With the because it was being worked on is an Unreal Engine game. Mm -hmm. And they were having a hard time getting Unreal Engine up to quality of like other Unreal games. So they had to bring in uh, the Coalition, who make Gears of War. And other studios to help them. And Rare. And Rare, yeah. Because Rare, I think, they said that Rare was good at optimizing for yeah. higher frame rates or something like that. Uh, which was crazy. But they could have done that earlier mm -hmm. had, had they known. But all, that's, a again, a, a very strange thing to navigate because you don't want to interfere too much with creative work. Because yeah. you should be able to trust the developer to do a good job. Because yeah. they've done such a good job in the past. Um, but also you want to offer all that's why they have so many studios because all of the studios can all help each other. Yeah. Um, and that just, it just fell flat, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, it like, it sucks because, you know, Microsoft bought all of these studios mm -hmm. and they don't really have a lot to show for it right now because a lot, almost all the studios they bought were making games for both PlayStation and Xbox. So they were allowed to finish making the games for PlayStation and then move on to Xbox exclusive. Most of these studios have not released their next Xbox exclusive. And the ones that have, like Obsidian released Pediment, um, which got great reviews, but it didn't... Not, I didn't even not, hear about that. That's not a game that's going to set the world on fire. Yeah. You know, that's a weird side-scrolling game that looks like it was made on parchment paper. Yeah, I've you know, never even that's, heard of that's that. That's not going to, you know, that's not going to sell 10 million units or whatever. Um. So, yeah, it's just... People want to know what the state of like Xbox gaming is, and it doesn't even look like Microsoft even knows what that is. I think that they have a plan. It's just very uh, uh, ambiguous, or, or it seems that way to us. Like, yeah. like we have to stop thinking about the, the the gaming space right now as being. PlayStation versus Xbox versus Nintendo. Mm -hmm. You know, you also have PC and you right. also have mobile games and stuff, but they're not necessarily versus each other. Yeah. There's for the la for as long as we can remember there's been Xbox versus PlayStation because they've been the two big ones with the best graphics yeah. that are all that have a lot of very similar games and then Nintendo usually does their own thing. Yeah. But we're in a space now where it's Microsoft is trying to join Nintendo in doing their own thing. Right. They're they're realizing that competing with Sony is kind of not working out for them anymore. So they're trying to compete in other ways that they have technology that yeah. they need to be able to utilize, like cloud gaming. But at the same time, I mean, usually, I mean, it's different with Microsoft because they have all the money in the world. But usually, if a console is not selling well, and if you're in last place two generations in a row, yeah, that's a bad sign. That usually means there's not going to be a third generation when yeah. you're last place. Yeah. So could this very well be the last generation where we get an Xbox home console? It's the it will be the last generation we get an Xbox home console as we know them. Like yeah. like I think it's going to get weird from here. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be like, you know, the 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 traditional yeah. home console that we're used to. It could end up being more like a computer. It could end up being uh a streaming device. Yeah. It, it, it's going to it's going to get weird. I I am convinced that like at this point 
you know, the Series X is might very well be if things don't turn turn around like within the next two three years, the Series X will be the last Xbox home yeah. console, and Xbox is going to become an app on your PC, and we're going to start seeing Halo on PlayStation. We're going to start seeing uh, Gears of War on Switch and things like that because they've got nothing else. I think it's possible that Microsoft releases a new console in the future, but it's going to be like a weird PC thing. Like it's going to be like kind of like an Xbox and kind of like a computer. Right. It's going to be this weird sort of in between. At, at most, I think they might finally just do the streaming box. Like, I think figure, that's figure, what, figure out a way to finally do that. I think the streaming price. box is a hundred percent happening. Yeah. I think that's, we're getting that any minute now yeah. where they're going to have a streaming box. Um, the next console, that's more of a big question. Yeah. Um, I mean, we know Microsoft's trying to do something with Windows or or at least a lot of people got excited because Microsoft had an internal pitch about having uh, Windows be more friendly for handheld yeah. gaming. Um, I think that there's room for uh, Windows being uh, easier to navigate for uh, home theater use. Yeah. And that's just kind of the Xbox home screen, you know? Mm -hmm. So unifying all of that i think is is pot a potential strategy right. going forward i want to dive into the chat because john got the juice says i don't want the smoke from bob wolf so we're gonna give it to him let's yeah. see what he said uh he said i blame pc fanboys for redfall state all these years of pc fanboys saying that bethesda games being buggy and broken is what gives them its charm now has come back to bite pc gamers and gamers in general and then that's such ca cap, Bob. It's your opinion, though. I don't. What's the cap, though? What, <laughs> what did I say? That's cap. Saying great games don't sell consoles is an insane comment. Oh, okay. That is probably that. I mean, at this point, it's not going to. I think it's too late for the. Yeah, you need a lot. Yeah, you need a you need a lot, you and need... and they they need to. They need a lot of them, and and it's gonna take a long time for them yeah. to get a lot of great. Like first here's party the thing: stuff. Halo should have been that game, yeah. even with a year delay. But the problem is, Halo didn't come out great. It came out fine, I guess. <laughs> and fine, I guess, doesn't sell systems. And fine, I guess, doesn't have long life. Yeah. You know, because Halo is a multiplayer game. You're supposed to play that game forever. I guess people played the campaign. Some liked it. Some didn't. That's okay. But they didn't keep playing. Yeah, and they so. had nothing else in between. Yeah. They had Halo, and then and that's yeah. it. You know, like it, 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 they they bought a bunch of studios and 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 did nothing with it. Did nothing with them. So so they 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 fucked it up. Yeah. Phil Spencer says that it's because they lost the Xbox One generation to Sony, and yeah. everybody has just been in the Sony ecosystem since then. And I think there's some truth to that, but uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to it. It's also that they completely botched this generation yeah. too. Well, you think about it, like that was that was around the time when people were finally used to the idea of. You buy something and then you can carry it over to the upgraded version. Yeah. Because, you know, we look at iPhones and Android phones. You know, I have this, the Twitter app on my phone is the same one I've had since my iPhone 3G back in 2009. So, like, I've been able to carry over all my purchases on my phone. That's the world we live in. And video games have now entered that world. Yeah. And if most people had PlayStations... They can carry things over from one PlayStation to the next. Yeah. I mean, I hope Nintendo learns this. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Um, so, yeah, he he's right in that sense. And then plus, you got to remember, Xbox sold significantly less than PlayStation did during that generation. It was like two to one. Yeah. Sales. So, uh, so uh, Konami Man said, don't forget that Sony turned the PS3 around with a great first party games in the second half of the generation and ended up finishing ahead of of the xbox 360 did they finish ahead globally maybe globally and like not by a lot but still like their their comeback was very impressive yeah yeah so uh but i don't know if microsoft microsoft tried to turn things around last gen by completely redoing what the xbox one was going from an entertainment system to an actual games console yeah, yeah. by having backwards compatibility by actually having 
you know, they didn't have a as strong of a first party lineup as Sony did, but they had a first party lineup. Yeah. They had, you know, big Halo games. They had two Gears of Wars. They had Sunset Overdrive. You know, they had they actually had games. So now they don't. Yeah, it's 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 not looking good right now yeah. for, for whatever reason. Um there was another chat message I wanted to bring up. Uh, um, I, 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 I lost it. I don't know. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, Low Bloom says, "Did Halo Infinite launch on PC with no issues? Uh, it ran great, and it's optimized great. Mm-hmm. It launched with." maybe half of the features that they promised yeah that's that's uh it wasn't technically bad like it ran good it's just it didn't have it was it was a year late a whole year late uh and they didn't deliver what they said they would and they ended up cutting features and stuff so that's the biggest problem dude halo infinite still has desync okay I always had a, a fine time running Halo on any device I tried it on. My PC, my freaking little handheld tablets yeah, yeah. and shit. It runs awesome on all of that stuff. Yeah. Um. Anyway, let's plow through this next couple of news stories. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, Sony is shutting down Pixel Opus. The studio announced it on Twitter this Friday. Oh, I know these guys. Dear, dear friends, our Pixel Opus adventure has come to an end, the studio said. As we look to new futures, we wanted to say a heartfelt thank you to the millions of passionate players who have supported us and our mission to make beautiful, imaginative games with heart. The... San Mateo-based Pixel Opus arrived on the scene uh, at E3 2014 with a surprise announcement and release of its first game entwined for the PS4. The studio's second and final game was 2019's Concrete Genie about a bullied young boy who discovers the ability to bring his paintings to life. The game was nominated for two DICE Awards and two BAFTAs. I wonder what they've been working on. Uh, Because that's just gone. Yeah. That sucks. That's it. Because Concrete Genie came out in, in 2019. Yeah. So they, they had to have been working on something, and then Sony's just like, no. Sony, they, they must have been working on something. They showed it to Sony, and Sony was like, ah, I don't know, guys. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's not working out. Because like, if Sony's doing so well, why did they close the studio? Yeah, it must have been that bad. Yeah. Or, or they just didn't see a use for that studio. I guess, but if you're trying to promote like yourself as like the premier... Uh, because like all their stuff that they that Sony puts out like has this this like sheen of prestige to it. Yeah. Because like you know, there's obviously The Last of Us, but now God of War even is like trying to be this like HBO style drama about a guy who's a bad dad and he's trying to learn how to be a good dad <laughs> and stuff. Spider Man is just as good as the good Spider Man movies in some cases better. Mm-hmm. You know, so like they have this like you know pillar of excellence that they set for themselves and pixel opus seems to have been like trying to do that but like for more of an indie bend to it uh john got the juice says they had a project with sony animation oh there you go that could be that could be what they were up to yeah. it, it could have been a spider-man thing yeah, yeah everybody I've probably got a bunch of studios working on it in the spider-verse yeah. and that's coming out any minute now isn't yeah. it? yeah in the spider-verse it's june i think so maybe they were done with them maybe maybe they were like ah yeah Uh, But speaking of Spider-Man, Spider-Man Remastered for the PS5 is finally available standalone. Oh. Uh, While Sony said that Spider-Man Remastered would be available as a standalone product later this month, it actually uh, came out just 24 hours later. Uh, The PlayStation Store has gone up for... The PlayStation game has gone up for purchase uh, at at the previously confirmed price of $49.99 or $49.99 British pounds. Uh, the PS5 remaster hands the web singer a 4K resolution at 60 frames per second and then bundles in the City That Never Sleeps DLC on top of it. With Spider-Man 2 on its way later this year, it's the perfect way to get yourself set up for the sequel or revisit the story of Peter Parker and MJ in a world of Insomniac games uh, all over again on the PS5. Then, if you need even more uh, from the Spider-Verse, a free comic book prequel uh, is being released uh, this weekend. That was last weekend for free comic book day. I did not get it. Uh, Just Mm -hmm. a reminder, the PS4 owners can upgrade to the PS5 version for $10. This is if you own it physically or any of the digital releases of the game. However, this does not extend to those who have played the game via PS Plus. 
So if you played it as part of the PlayStation Plus collection, um, you're not getting an update. Yeah. So Spider-Man Remastered, this is the first Spider-Man game, Yeah. was originally available with Miles Morales? Originally available with select editions of Miles Morales. Okay, so you needed to pay extra... I think you needed to the, get Miles I think Morales. you specifically needed the PlayStation 5 Deluxe Edition of Miles Morales okay. to get Spider-Man Remastered. Or have the PS4 version of Spider-Man and pay for the upgrade to well, the Remastered. That just became available. Okay. Yeah. So this is the first time it's available as a standalone purchase. Right. You don't have to buy Miles Morales in order to get this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This this was like a weird thing that like Sony was like gatekeeping this to the PS5. Sony had a bunch of weird upgrade shit with between PS4 and PS5. I remember they when, made it needlessly yeah, complicated. When this came out and people were like, oh, can we transfer our saves from the PS4 version? And Sony's like, no. And then like two months later, Insomniac's like, we figured out a way to do it. I just want to point out that Capri Sun Poppy's in chat. He's like a he's like a streamer or some shit. Yeah. Uh shared ban info, restricted band in scootish and more. Oh boy. What did you do? You, what did you What'd do? What did you do, my man? Anyway, uh Jag Racer in the chat says, currently playing Valorant at the moment. Bob, have you noticed that randoms on Valorant whine so much? I have been gaming for years, but this seems much worse. Yeah, but also my own team, will, <laughs> my actual private team, will whine yeah. that much. So it sounds it's about it's about even, I'd say. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of like backseating and stuff when you. Yeah. I hate playing with randoms because you did they are uh, you're always like self-conscious about what you're doing and like yeah. they're, they're gonna yell at you and tell you even though you're all the same rank you're mm -hmm. forced to be as good as everybody around you yeah stupid anyway uh next space world gamecube prototype found is there a rom can i play it uh so i'll just try to summarize this article because it's pretty long uh oh here you go the GameCube had not been uh, yet released by August 2021 Nintendo Space World, so it was further promoted at this event. Uh, there were or apparently a couple of different GameCube consoles on display. Uh, one was a pink model that never saw public release. Oh, the actual GameCube. Yeah. Okay, so uh, to summarize, I, I saw this. I did see this. Yeah. Uh, so some someone bought one of the GameCubes that was used at... Nintendo used to have this its own little uh, event called Space World. And when they revealed the GameCube... They had GameCube models there, and somebody actually bought one of those prototypes. The GameCube system itself is just a shell. What's actually oh. playing the games is a dev kit that's hidden under the table connected to the shell. Oh, I remember I saw a clip of like these models that were yeah. holding the prototype GameCube and like waving it around. And there's like an LED in it and shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't find that now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think, it, you know, it's something that people forgot about. But, you know, GameCube's in a, in a hot streak right now because two of the best reviewed games this year are GameCube games <laughs> with Metroid Prime and Resident Evil 4. There was uh, another picture that I saw that showed the controller on the GameCube Pro. Yeah, it was weird. Like, it looks like the GameCube controller, but, like, if it was wrong. Yeah, the D-pad is the start button. Yeah. Uh, there's... This is like kind of it. Um, the top left one, the start button is where the D-pad yeah. was supposed to be. Oh, and I didn't even realize the... Uh, yeah, that's what always freaked me out. On all of them, the face yeah. buttons are weird. The mm -hmm. B button is not a circle, like a red circle. It's yeah. a... You know, honestly, that kind of makes more sense. The, yeah. the, the layout that they have here than, than what we currently have. <laughs> so yeah, uh, very cool. Yes. Very cool to see the video game history getting uncovered like that. Yes. Uh, next we have oh, this is the last one. Niantic refutes bl blames. Tell me what's happening. Uh, Niantic refutes claims that Pokemon Go's revenue has slumped uh, to a five-year low. Uh, Niantic has refuted claims that it, that April saw the game accrue its worst monthly revenue in uh, five years. As fans process changes to the game's raid system, we generally don't comment on third-party estimates of our revenue, as they are often incorrect, which uh, is the case here, said an ads exposed person in an email to Eurogamer. Our revenue so far in 2023 is up on last year. 
That response refutes the recent report from MobileGamer.biz, which claims that Pokemon Go's revenue has slumped from $42 million in March down to just $34 million in April, representing the app's lowest monthly revenue since February 2018. Uh, news- in a month? Yeah. Wait, $34 million in a month? Yeah. What are they worried about? <laughs> I don't know. They apparently they were so offended by that they just they, had they to. have they have one game yeah like like you can't operate on thirty four million yeah that's low I guess I mean holy shit I mean thirty four like thirty four from forty two that's a pretty big dip yeah but whatever <laughs> you I'm sorry you can recover you'll be yeah. fine. Unless you spent all the $40 million from last month. Like, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. News of the alleged decline Niantic's rebuttal uh, comes as Pokemon Go fans rail against the changes made to the app's raid system. Previously, the social distancing and lockdown procedures brought in to combat the COVID-19 pandemic pushed Niantic to create remote play features for its game that allow players to attend raids from the safety of their home. The feature was a boon in many... Uh, a boon to many communities who lived in remote areas or had disabilities that prevented easy travel. However, Niantic announced that from April 6th, it was hiking its remote raid uh, pass prices, at, uh, putting a cap on the number of in-game uh, in-game events that players could attend each day. So, yeah, I guess people aren't liking the way Pokemon goes, man. So I would understand how much why they would lose so much money. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to play it all the time, and I fell out of it pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, there's just no reason for me to, I opened it up a couple months ago and there's, it, it's just, there's no, there's no, I'm afraid there to me. open that app up cause I know I will not recognize it. Uh, no, it's pretty much, it's, I mean, when I opened it, it was pretty normal. Yeah. I was expecting a lot of things to pop up at me Yeah, and it really wasn't too bad. Okay. Um, nice jacket, Bob Dex. Is it a jacket? It's like a, it's like a it's flannel. Good. Yeah. It's like a shirt. It's like a shirt. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I know they have other games. Ingress doesn't really count because that's the pre Pokemon yeah. Go. That I pl- I played Ingress before yeah. Pokemon Go. I used to drive around, you know, to all the. It was it was basically exactly like Pokemon Go. You drive around yeah. to all these different nodes and like sp- sp- you basically spin in the Pokestop right. and stuff. Um, and that was fun. Yeah. Uh, but then that turned into Pokemon Go, and I was like, oh yeah, all these places are the same as the ones that yeah. were in Ingress. All right, it's all the news. All right. But now, so now it's we time do. to do this. And this is a reply to my tweet. Oh, no, it's not a reply to my tweet. This is a rabbit hole. Yeah. I tweeted the tier, li- the Zelda tier list that we made on the Nintendo podcast. Right. And by we, I mean me. I'm the only one who had anything to do with this tier <laughs> list. What do you think about the tier list? <sighs> uh, I am abstaining from my All right. So list. anyway... <laughs> uh. E quote tweeted it right and said Bob is a terrible human, which is true. And then somebody responded, "This is tree for threes, George J fourteen, and said it's like a meme. <laughs> yeah. Most people rejected his message; they hated Jesus because he told them the truth. <laughs> and it's a picture of the that Zelda is funny. That's that pretty funny. That's a pretty good one. Uh, all right, we're gonna talk to you guys. Yes, right now in the chat. How uh, you starting off, with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Yeah, it said we had an unboxing. Do we still do? Oh yeah, shit. Let me do that. Okay. Uh, this is this is a quick one though. Okay, oh, it's uh, right there. It's right here. This is uh, let's see. Uh, I, I have no idea what this is. This Oops. is just a random thing that was sent to okay. us. Uh, it had a note on it. It's is this two notes? It says hello. I'm a DFW based artist at Dallas Fort Worth. Yes. Uh, and I wanted to send you some pieces I've made. I mostly draw Pokemon characters, and I made most of them while watching your YouTube videos. I love having them on in the background, as if I'm on a uh, FaceTime with a friend. Aww. Aww. Uh, please keep doing what you do, and I hope you like my drawings. They're all prints of scans of my hand-drawn art. Uh, check out my Insta at Rima.Abbas, R-E-E-M-A dot A-B-B-A-S. I mostly sell these prints at some local game stores, but I'm ho- ha- hoping to have enough interest to have a booth at a Comic-Con one day. For now, I take custom orders on Instagram. 
Uh, so check them out. I'm gonna just rip this open. Hopefully I don't rip the artwork. Oh, that's cute. They look like uh, like lithographs. Oh, look at that. Yeah. These are good. They're very good. They're very cute. Oh, there's a lot. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's a lot in here. Oh, jeez. Oh, they are kind of like lithographs. Oh, my God. Cute. Uh, and these are the prints. Oh, whoa. That's sick. Wow. Wow. Ooh. 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 That's cool. Now, you must be careful because those are the exact size and shape as coasters. I was going to say, <laughs> I almost said I could use these as coasters. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's probably a bad idea. These are some pieces from my Octopus Desert Thief series. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, these are color. Oh. These don't look like prints. Are these prints? Yeah, these are prints. Cute. Very cool. Wow, thank you. Very cool. Check them out. Check them out on Instagram. Here's here's all the info. Here it is. Yeah. You can't see this. It's probably too tiny for you. But I tried. All right. Now we're in the chat. Yes. Uh, uh, where we got, are we? We got Zay, uh, who says, hey, Bob, just did some illicit activities uh -oh, <laughs> to a base 3DS. I got in decent condition for $116. That's a very good deal. Yeah. Uh, I got a few games on there using nefarious tactics, but other than games, is there anything I should be doing to future-proof it? Is there any updates I should be aware of, or is it just a decent emulating machine for a casual guy to pick up and play every once in a while? It's definitely a decent emulation machine. I don't think there's anything you need to do if you're doing if, if you're playing the games on it that's as much as you can do that there you can uh put emulators on there but uh it's best used as just a machine to play ds and 3ds games yeah. and yeah that's basically it uh i will say though i will recommend looking into putting a vpn on your router mm. because if you're using h shop on your 3ds um I think that leaves you open to uh, get a letter from your ISP in the mail right. saying, hey, stop downloading all of this mm. nefarious stuff. Uh, so just be careful with that. See if there's a way to put a VPN on your router. Um, anyway, Justin Pritch Pr Pritchard says, I've been playing Jedi Survivor on PC Ace... Asus G14 2022 with zero issues and it runs fine. I think some of the stuff about it being broken on PC is overblown. I heard bad things about the PS5 version. Yeah, that was also getting some flack, but it, apparently the issues have not been as bad as the PC version. I, you know, part of me wants to agree with Justin because every time I hear about like games being buggy and like broken, I more often than not, it does seem to be overblown. Yeah. Like you get some frame rate stutter. And all of a sudden, like, ah, oh, this is an abomination of in relation to state. Um, I am inclined to think that Jedi Survivor might be a little bit worse for wear just because Digital Foundry went out of their way to, like, make a very detailed video about it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that uh, there's, like, a small problem, like the fact that it runs at uh, not 60 frames. Yeah. Uh, people take that. Even people who wouldn't even notice the difference, they take that and they run with it. Right. They're like, this is the big problem mm -hmm. with the game. Uh, I will say that on PC specifically, the problem is with higher end cards. Right. Uh, and that's a problem with a couple of uh, new AAA games. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you have a very nice Asus laptop, which might be better off playing Jedi Survivor. Yeah. You, might, you might be better off than somebody who has yeah. like a brand new 40 series. Product. Honestly. This is the Asus laptop that has the uh, screen on it. Look at this. Oh, little, with on the yeah, 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 animation. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. I like it. Anyway. Uh, next up we have Caleb Fox who says, maybe y'all will talk about this in the next episode, but what are your thoughts about Rogue Squadron being free on Prime Gaming? What? Excuse me? What? I bought that game for forty dollars like, right when it came out and never touched it uh, on PC. On PC, no, no, on uh, on Xbox, on Xbox One. Rogue Squadron. I'm thinking of the new Rogue 
what's the new one? The new oh squadron, squadron, Star squadrons, Wars squadrons. Yes, was not a fan of that game. Did not really like that game all that much. Rogue Squadron? No, Rogue Squadron. No, no, I know, but now I'm changing the subject back to Rogue Squadron. Yes, the N64 game, which also oh my got God, a PC it, release. Yeah. It is. Oh, it did get a PC release? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That yeah. makes more sense. It is uh, in Prime Gaming. Which, if it got a PC release, then why hasn't it been released on modern systems yet? Because, like, Aspire released all the other games. Yeah. So who... It's called Rogue Squadron 3D. That was the PC release, yeah. So is it... Was it revamped at all? It, it just had, had, to it just had better gra- like better, better graphics. <laughs> yeah, but who did that? Uh, f- LucasArts. Oh, so it's just it's just the same version. It's the same, since... it's the same game. It just had a... Because this is widescreen. Yeah. Rogue Squadron. Oh, this is the first N64 one. Never yeah. mind. The one for the GameCube notoriously emulates horribly. Does it? Yeah. It's it's you can't you basically can't play it in any GameCube emulator. Really? Yeah, it, wow. it's it's very bad. Yeah. Um This is insane that you could yeah. just that that you could just I didn't even know this was available at all on PC. Yeah. Uh so if you have Amazon Prime, link it to your Twitch account. Yeah. Not only can you give us a subscription for free, thank you very much for supporting the channel. But you can play, but Rogue you can play Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's the value, Prime Gaming, baby. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, we have Bat Mabel who says, "Please be careful when saying things like reviewers have close relationship with devs and don't criticize the games as much because of it." That's literally what got us Gamergate in the first place. There's no proof or even reason to believe something like that is true. I ag- I agree. Yes, but I think that. The whole Gamergate thing was just like there is something to talk about there because it does exist. The 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 journalists having relationships with reviewers. It's a thing that happens. Right. But at the same time, you do need to be careful because people can take that nugget yeah. and run with it to push their own toxic, uh, but misogynistic, that, bigoted. But who's agenda. the problem? Who's the problem there? Is it me for bringing up the fact that there are some reviewers out there who have too close of a relationship with devs? No. Or is it the weird, wacko, bigoted people who turn it somehow into a misogynistic thing? I mean, because that's what Gamergate was about. It's them, <laughs> but it's it just sucks that we still live in a world where we have to like be careful about that. You know? Yeah. No, I, 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 that, I, I, I that. that's what I, that's what I think they're getting at. Mm-hmm. You know. I understand that, but but uh, these are just the realities of the world. There's, you got to point your guns at the people who deserve it, you know? Right. Like, there, there's, there, there's, there's people at fault in, in yeah. situations <laughs> like this. Anyway, Mika Bryant says, how do you not realize nobody cares about the Actisoft debacle anymore? It's so boring after all this time. I can't care anymore. Please drop it. We care about it. Yeah. It's very interesting to us because of how big of a deal it is in, yeah. in the video game world and in, in the future of video games. Uh, this is going to be looked back on in 10 years as like a milestone moment in gaming. Absolutely. So that's why we're so interested in it. Yeah. And we're going to talk about whatever we're interested in. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are big news that we just do don't care about that we don't talk about and there are a lot of things that are small news that we care way too much about yeah anyway we're in the chat now Mm -hmm. how you guys doing bob do you ever consider looking at using a surface duo one as a ds slash 3ds emulator it has a snapdragon 855 and people have used stuff like the kishi with it really or just standalone with digital controllers and it looks pretty interesting surface duo one uh resident evil 2 is free on amazon luna right now does that mean i can play it this has included in prime i was looking for rogue squadron and then i went down a rabbit hole oh my god it's 450 for a surface duo that's kind of crazy huh how the hell do you put that in a kishi (laughs) Hmm. 
Does anyone know if the Surface Duo fits with Razer Kishi? Oh, here's a guy. Has it on Etsy. Oh, yeah, you just 3D print a thing. Okay, that makes sense. That's crazy. He's playing freaking Princess Peach on it. Nice. That's really cool. Maybe there, there, maybe there is something there for that. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't want to keep buying fucking. I have so many, you know, Android devices. Yeah. And computers just laying around. <laughs> uh, Bob, my only problem with the Zelda tier list was wood and everyone trying to influence you and being wrong about stuff. <laughs> Oh, about about you and being wrong? Oh, about me being wrong about stuff. I also saw Wood had to do a tier list of his own. Will you do the same when you guys eventually do a Mario tier list on Nintendo? I don't think we will ever do a Mario tier list Mm -hmm. because I don't think Wood understood the assignment. (laughs) Or I don't think he will do the same thing that I did with with, with Zelda. I think that Wood will um, try to incorporate the impact that the, that the games had right more than his own personal feelings. got it i used strictly just my own personal feelings because right. i thought that'd be more fun and interesting mm-hmm. and, and it's funny to to shit on things that yeah. people like and, <laughs> and, and praise things that people don't like it's yeah. fun it's interesting there's nothing interesting about being like you know these are widely considered the best games so here's yeah. a list of them like you anybody could do that mm-hmm. Anyway, Bob, will you be streaming the next Nintendo Direct? Uh, is it the Zelda thing? Because no, I don't. Uh, I don't really. I saw like there was going to be a PlayStation sh- showcase soon, and I saw a rumor going around like that Sony was going to announce a whole bunch of Konami exclusives, including like a Metal Gear Solid remake and like a couple other things. We should have talked about that. I I, I I almost put it in the keep, but I didn't see anything. Like, all of it was just basically, like, hearsay. And the only websites that were reporting on it were, like, you know, those kind of websites. That like yeah, I saw a tweet about it. I saw a tweet yeah, about it. So I didn't, want, I, I didn't want to put it in there. I want that so bad. I know uh, the Konami Man says MGS3 remake. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Uh, I still think it's MGS1 remake. I still think that makes I mean, way that would, more sense. That would make the three. most sense, yeah. Um, Surface Duo is $200. Wow. That's kind of crazy that might that might be worth it then if it's two hundred dollars yeah um did i put it in my wish list yeah uh bob your take on twilight princess had me laughing i gave up at the same point for the same reason (laughs) i'm so glad that people understood that yeah that that was a real thing that happened king fergs thanks for the six months i appreciate it What's for dinner? Factor? No joke. I had factor for lunch today. <laughs> uh, Bob, have you heard of a 3D laptop being released in the future? I wonder if how emulating 3DS software on it would be. I haven't heard of any 3D laptop. Uh, I think that the 3D wave is kind of over. Yeah, like, I don't think anybody's making 3D stuff anymore. Yeah. I I think that that's the, the VR wave is like even not the VR wave the uh the metaverse wave is like already out so yeah uh 128 gigabytes instead of 256 yeah 128 is more than enough in in a portable emulator yeah are they even making 3D TVs anymore no 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 uh unpopular opinion my favorite Metal Gear Solid is Metal Gear Solid 2 I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. Yeah, a lot of people actually really like that game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like weirdness and all. For a long time it was people's favorites. Yeah. Um I have heard I've heard that a lot. My favorite was 3. Uh but I I got to say people don't like 5 because it got weird and wacky, but I kind of like that one the most, I think. See, I didn't like 5 not because it was weird and wacky. I just, I didn't like 5 because I felt like the gameplay wasn't meshing with what i thought a metal gear solid game should be you know i I loved the gameplay right it's the story that just fell apart like for all intents and purposes the gameplay is good Mm -hmm. but i think i think i reached a point i i get to in a lot of games where like there's a disconnect between like what i think should be happening in the game and what the game wants me to do 
Okay. And I think I reached that point and I just like, I, I don't think I can play this anymore. I just got to a point in Metal Gear Solid 5 where I didn't understand what was happening or right. what I was supposed to be doing. I just kind of finished all of the missions and it felt like I was replaying the same missions because I think I was. Yeah. Because it didn't feel like the game ended, but I mm-hmm. think it did. So the way that you like unlock more of the story just like didn't make sense. But I absolutely loved the gameplay loop and the and the and the mechanics the right. most. I liked it at first, but then like after a while, like there's was like I something's not clicking with me anymore. Mm-hmm. So. I, for, for the record, I played the entire game as a pacifist. I right. I made all of my weapons sleepy time weapons and yeah tried to go that route, and I had a lot of fun doing it that way. Bob, do you think the new Switch or Switch Pro be released this year or next year? I think announcement at the end of this year, release next year. Uh, I was watching your video, Dan, how you make uh, videos because I was really curious. It's a really interesting process. Do you have any new mods coming up on stream or videos coming out soon? I always look forward to them. Um, this schedule has gotten really weird. Um I had to do, I, I just made a sponsored video on a laptop that is being uh, approved right now. So it's done. I'm just waiting to release it. Mm-hmm. Um, the ROG Ally, I just got it today. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, <laughs> the embargo is up Thursday. Okay. I don't think I have enough time to make a video for that. So that might go up sunday the mm-hmm. rog ally video um and what else oh i also have the retroid uh flip that came oh. a few days ago uh but i i want to get a video on the rog ally yeah. first because that's more pertinent pertinent uh KJX says others have already started sharing that they got the handheld so you're good they posted pictures of the box too yeah, I didn't want to post a picture of the box. I will. You know what? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I got a lot of thoughts. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, that's all I could say. Mm-hmm. But uh, you will love all of the content is all <laughs> I'm going to say. Um, Please fill the ally with every console emulator. <laughs> I am... The the stream was a little rocky when we started yeah. because I was it's in the other room downloading everything right yeah. now. <laughs> so uh Will show us the comics you got from Free Comic Book Day. You didn't, you didn't I I didn't I didn't have a chance <laughs> to go. I downloaded um the Dawn of DC free comic and the Ninja Turtles free comic because those were on Comicsology. Um Comicsology has generally not been the best place to go for free comic book day because they don't put everything up. Mm-hmm. They want you to actually go to a comic book store. Uh, and it was especially bad this year because this is the first year under the Amazon designed Comicsology. And oh my God, trying to find those comics was abysmal. Mm-hmm. So go to your lo- if you go to your local comic book store, they might still have some left over. They might charge you like a dollar for it now, but just go check to see. Um, are you allowed to speak about your first impressions right now on the ROG Ally? Uh, I'm allowed to talk about my first impressions from the event that I went to. And it was pretty cool. Yeah. And now that I know the price is confirmed, $6.99 for the more expensive one. Okay. As a confirmed price. Okay. Uh, that's a fucking great price. Yeah. So that got me way more excited for right. it. Right. That's what I can say. Uh, in my experience with the Steam Deck, at least, Yuzu and Ryujinx are poop compared to SteamOS. Really? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'll also say, again, that Steam on a handheld that's Windows yeah. looks exactly like the Steam Deck now. So having Steam makes me feel like I'm just using a Steam Deck. Right. So... That is great. Mm-hmm. We're, we we like that. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think that's it. 
Thanks for hanging out. Thank everybody. you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts. Google Play, Spotify, or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. You did that in a in a different order this time, I noticed. You know what it is? Because it, you, you really just can't go to Anchor anymore because it's now Spotify podcast. Mm. So, like, trying to remember, like, the order I usually do the podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast from, we're there. Apple, Spotify, what have you, we're there. Um, you can also, say, Alexa, play the Wolf Den podcast, and she'll do it. Oh, God. I have an Alexa that's in there. <laughs> I have. I will have one upstairs. That's Hannah's. And then yeah. there's one in the other room that isn't connected to a speaker. Mm. So that's just going to play the Wolf Den podcast for eternity now. Nice. Um, Banjo X, thanks for the subscription. And King Fergs, thanks for the six months. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody go watch Jackson. He's streaming. Uh... He lost his job. Yes. Which is the best thing that's ever happened to him because <laughs> he needs to be a streamer. Yeah. Uh, he's been streaming a fuck ton and he's playing uh, Breath of the Wild Crowd Control, which means you can go in there and you can donate a little bit of money to kill him. <laughs> so go do that. You know, the dream. The dream. What podcast is playing? I have no idea. Maybe it's an ad before the podcast. Maybe. Anyway, thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, go watch Jackson. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.